Hey, 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 family, it's your girl Evelyn here, and I'm back because I wanted to share the two books that I read in July. Obviously, you can probably tell by the thumbnail what the two books are, but um, the first book is The Kiss Countdown by Etta Easton, and the second book is By the Book by Jasmine Gilry. Now, I'm not quite a 10, 20 book a month book girly yet. I am probably progressing at about the rate of two books per month which I'm, I'm satisfied with I don't necessarily have any kind of like goals surrounding reading except for the fact I just want to continue reading right so uh, I want to talk about these books very quickly no spoilers um, let me know in the comments below if you've read these books and then I've got another video coming where I'm going to share with you my physical TBR because I checked out a ton of books that were on my black romance TBR from my local library. And so I'm really, really excited about it. So the first book I read uh, in July was by the book by uh, Jasmine Gilray. And this book is so cute. It's a very bookish book because the two main characters. Um, oh, I forgot the girl's name. Um, Izzy. Yeah, I, I remember the guy's name, Bo. Okay. So Izzy is a book editor's assistant. Basically, she works for a publishing company. And then Bo is one of their contracted writers, shall I say. And basically, this is, you know, it's a really, really cute book. There's zero spice in it. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. Um, and basically, the premise of the book, it says, Isabel is completely lost. That's Izzy. When she first began her career in publishing after college, she did not expect to be 25, still living at home, and one of the few black employees at her publishing house. Overworked and underpaid, constantly torn between speaking up or stifling herself, Izzy thinks there must be more to this publishing life. So when she overhears her boss complaining about a beastly, high-profile author who has failed to deliver his long-awaited manuscript, Isabel sees an opportunity to prove her worth and finally get the recognition she deserves. All she has to do is go to the author's house in Santa Barbara's, uh, the author's Santa Barbara mansion and give him a pep talk or three. How hard could it be, right? But Izzy quickly finds out she is in over her head. Bo Towers, so that's that's the guy, uh, is not some celebrity light ray writing a tell-all memoir. He is jaded and withdrawn, and it turns out just as lost as Izzy. It's so cute. But despite his standoffishness, Izzy needs Bo to deliver. And with her encouragement, his story begins to spill onto the page. They soon discover they have more in common than either of them expected as their deadline nears. Izzy and Bo begin to realize there may be something there that wasn't there before. Okay. So here's the thing. This is a forks, forced proximity um, romance and it's really, really cute. I will say this. I really, really enjoyed this. I'm not quite into rating books yet because I have, I don't feel like I've read enough to start rating, but I really, really enjoyed this. Would I read it again? Possibly. Okay. I will say that the end of this book, I read multiple times. There are, there are some things that are written on the page at the end of this book or the, or, or the ending pages of this book that I just were swoon worthy. And I just had to go back and read multiple times. Right. And so let me say this. So this book has zero spice, which is totally fine with me. I do like a little bit of spice. Um, I'm coming to realize and you know, who knew this book has no spice, but here's my problem with it having no spice. There are moments in the book where they walk right up to the spice and then just skip over the spice. And so, you know, there's the whole closed door, you know, kind of, um, I guess you want to call it a metaphor in the book world about like it's alluded to. But this, I will say in here, it feels very abrupt, right? So in my, in my mind, I feel like if you're not going to do the spice and you're going to do the whole closed door angle, it needed to be smoother and it, it felt very kind of like and then it just like it was like okay you knew that they were he heading in a direction and then it was like ching we're off to the next day or the next thing it was very those parts were very kind of like choppy to me so that's my only complaint about this book but the story is really really cute it's an easy read I think I read this in like two days um like I said, I got this from my, my local library. Like, listen, the library is really hooking your girl up when it comes to the books right now. And sad to say, my library is closed now. 
for renovations and they're going to be closed for a year. They're going to have a temporary location, but I was like, girl, I just got here and y'all close it already. Anyway, so super, super cute. Like I said, the ending is swoon worthy and has some things, at least for me, that made me want to read more than once. So that was by the book by Jasmine Gilry. Okay. And then the kiss countdown by Ed- uh, Etta Easton. This was so cute. Okay. This was so cute. Um, A. Marie and Vincent. Oh, I just, okay. I'm going to read the, I'm going to read the back to you so you don't have to, right? So a struggling event planner and a sinfully hot astronaut. Yes, girl, an astronaut must decide if their fake relationship is worth a shot at happily ever after in this starry debut. This was a great debut. Um, so risk adverse event planner, A. Marie Price is jobless, newly single and about to lose her apartment. With no choice but to gamble on her shaky startup, the last thing she needs is to run into her smug ex and his new, less complicated girlfriend at A. Marie's favorite coffee shop. Panicking, she pretends to be dating the annoyingly sexy man she she met by spilling Americana all over his abs. He plays along for a price. Half the single men in Houston claim to be astronauts, but Vincent Rogers turns out to be the real deal. What starts off as a one-off lie morphs into a plan for three months. Three months, y'all. Leading up to his mission, A. Marie will play Vincent's doting partner in front of his loving but overly invested family. In exchange, she gets a rent-free room in his house so she can put every penny towards her struggling business. What A. Marie doesn't plan for is Vincent's gravitational pull. While her mind tells her a, f- a future with this astronaut is too unpredictable, her heart says he's exactly what she needs. As their time together counts down, Amory must decide if she'll settle for the safe life or shoot for the stars. Y'all, so this is this is like a combination trope. So it's like forced proximity and fake dating because she's living in his house. Per the back, so that's not a spoiler. Per the back of the book. And I will say this, I, I, I enjoyed this book. It's really, really cute. Would I read it again? Possibly. It's a little bit of spice in here. Not much. Right. And I feel like it's, it's very appropriate. And apparently I must like a little smut cause I could have used a little more, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and so, um, the thing about it is it's a slow burn though. Right. So like, it's a slow burn to get to the spice. And so I will say, you know, there's a lot of like hinting towards it. You know, obviously the story is told from A. Marie's point of view. I wish we got more of Vincent's point of view about what was going on and his thoughts and what he was thinking. Um, and so, but it's really, really cute. I feel like the story is cute. Very light, very fun. I mean, the book is pink. I mean, look at the cover. I mean, look at this, look at this, right? The book is cute. Um, I think I read this in two or three days. You know, it was super, super easy. So those are the two books that I read in July. I have several more coming up um, that I'm going to do another video on about what's on my physical TBR. I will link to my Amazon TBR list. I think that has like 100 plus black romances by black author books. Um, Because that's what I'm into right now with a black male and a black female lead, right? So that's like, if you're into that, if you want black romance, light and fluffy, because I'm I'm not necessarily doing dark romance yet. I I don't think that's my thing right now. Um, But if you want black romance, if you want light and fluffy, if you want by black authors with a black male and female lead, then that's what I've been curating on my Amazon TBR. So with that being said, these books were super cute. I will link directly to both of these books down below and my um, uh, digital TBR. And I will see you in my next video. Peace.